come to the water is all you who are thirsty. Come and drink. Come, it's free. Those are the words from Isaiah 55. This week we're dealing with the idea that God is the living water. And as you can probably hear, it's raining today. So I thought, where better place to tape about the living water than where we're hearing the living water in the background. So I want you to join with me today as we center ourselves in prayer. I invite you to close your eyes. And I want you to think and breathe in and out on the words, quench our thirst. Quench our thirst. Quench our thirst. Oh, Holy One, we've come to meet you today, this day. We carry the weight of our lives, our troubles, our responsibilities. Help us to know that you see us and all we carry. Help us to put it all down long enough to listen. Help us to set it all aside long enough to hear. Speak to us in living words. Quench our thirst with living water. Hold us with living love. Amen. Jesus had to go through Samaria. He came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, which was near the land Jacob had given to his son, Joseph. Jacob's well was there. Jesus was tired from his journey, so he sat down at the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to the well to draw water. Jesus said to her, Give me some water to drink. His disciples had gone into the city to buy him some food. The Samaritan woman asked, why do you, a Jewish man, ask for something to drink from me, a Samaritan woman? Jews and Samaritans didn't associate with each other. Jesus responded, If you recognized God's gift and who, he, and who is saying to you, Give me some water to drink, you would be asking him, and he would give you living water. The woman said to him, Sir, you don't have a bucket, and the well is deep. Where would you get this living water? You aren't greater than our father Jacob, are you? He gave us this well, and he drank from it himself, as did his sons and his livestock. Jesus answered, Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks from the water that I give will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become in those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up to into eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I will never be thirsty and will never need to come here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, get your husband and come back here. The woman replied, I don't have a husband. You are right to say, I don't have a husband. Jesus answered, You've had five husbands and the man you are with now isn't your husband. You've spoken the truth. The woman said, 
Sir, I see that you are a prophet. Our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you and your people say that it is necessary to worship in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Believe me, woman, the time is coming with you and your people will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You and your people worship what you don't know. We worship what we know because salvation is from the Jews. But the time is coming and is here when true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth. The Father looks for those who worship him in this way. God is spirit and is necessary to worship and it is necessary to worship God in spirit and truth. The woman said, I know that the Messiah is coming, the one who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will teach everything to us. Jesus said to her, I am the one who speaks with you. Just then Jesus' disciples arrived and were shocked that he was talking with a woman. But no one asked, what do you want? Or why are you talking with her? The woman put down her water jar and went into the city. She said to the people, come and see a man who has told me everything I've done. Could this man be the Christ? They left the city and were on their way to see Jesus. In the meantime, the disciples spoke to Jesus saying, Rabbi, eat. Jesus said to them, I have food to eat that you don't know about. The disciples asked each other, has someone brought him food? Jesus said to them, I am fed by doing the will of the one who sent me and by completing his work. Don't you have a saying? Four more months and then it is time for harvest? Look, I tell you, open your eyes and notice that the fields are already ripe for the harvest. Those who harvest are receiving their pays, their pay and gathering fruit for eternal life so that those who sow and those who can harvest can celebrate together. This is a true saying, the one that sows and another harvests. I have sent you to harvest what you didn't work hard for. Others worked hard, and you will share and you will share in their handwork. Many Samaritans in that city believed in Jesus because of the woman's word when she testified. He told me everything I've ever done. So when the Samaritans came to Jesus, they asked him to stay with him, them, and he stayed there for two days. Many more believed because of his word, and they said to the woman, We no longer believe because of what you said, for we have heard for ourselves, and we know that this one is truly the Savior of the world. thirsty should come to me. All who believe in me should drink, as the scripture says concerning me, rivers of living water will flow out from within him. Rivers of living water will flow out within him. That passage of scripture makes you think about God is the living water. It's the water that's falling from the sky right now. It's the water dripping down my drain pipe. As the water that sustains all of us and keeps us alive. It's the water that is made up 60% of our body. It's the water that makes the plants and flowers to bloom the water that keeps us alive. Jesus is calling himself 
the river of living water. In our scriptures today from John 4, Jesus encounters a woman. It says that Jesus was traveling through the Samaritan villages and he stops by a well, the well of Jacob. And the disciples go on ahead to gather some food. And while he's there by the well, a woman comes up. And the implication is this is the middle of the day. And so you wouldn't be coming to the well in the middle of the day unless there was a real emergency, a real need. Say someone was sick in your house. Because if you came to the wells, you came to the well at that time of day when you could walk to it with your friends and chat about all the things that were going on in your lives and the lives of all the people you know. And you would continue that talk as you gathered around the well, drawing out the water to fill up your jars and your buckets and then walk back to the village. And yet here she is, not then, not with friends and family chatting and gossiping and solving the problems of the world. Instead, she's there in the middle of the day to get water. And it makes us wonder why. I mean, most texts, most people who preach on it talk about the fallen woman that Jesus encounters. Most place her into a category and decide she's a slut and a whore. That she is one who isn't really deserving of Jesus' intention. They shame her. That's not where the scripture is. The scripture just says that she's there at the well. And when she gets to the well, Jesus asks her, Give me some water to drink. And she's puzzled by this. She says, why would you want water to drink? Ask me for that water. Why would you ask me, a Samaritan woman, to give you water? I can see you're religious, and I can see you're Jewish, and, and we don't really relate to each other. So why? Why are you asking me for this living water, this water to drink? And Jesus responds, if you could just recognize the God's gift to you and who's saying to you, give me some water, you would be asking him to give you the living water. And the woman looks at him and says, you don't have a bucket and this well is pretty deep. Where are you going to get this living water? Everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks from the water that I will give you will never be thirsty again. The water that I give will become to those who drink it a spring of water that bubbles up in eternal life. And of course, at that moment, she says, give me some of this water. Share some of this living water with me. Share this water I will, so that I will never be thirsty and will never need to come here to draw water again. Share with me the living water. And then Jesus gets real with her. Jesus gets real and goes to her exact moment and place, her broken spot. That place inside her that is hurting and wounded. That place inside her that has caused her such trauma. He says to her, Go get your husband and come back here. Go get your husband and come back here. He's taking her there. He's taking her there to her deepest hurt, her deepest wound. He's asking her to get real with him, to share her pain and grief and sorrow. 
to share the deepest part of herself that she doesn't share. That's why she's here at the well in the middle of the day, so she doesn't have to share that wound, that hurt, that sorrow, that guilt, whatever that wound is. And at that moment, she's honest. She gets real with him. She tells him the truth. A stranger. Maybe that's why. Maybe because he had already spoken to her about the promises of God. Maybe because he had already shared that there was a God willing to give her a drink of water that will quench her thirst. Maybe in that moment, she knew that she could trust him with her wound and her pain. She knew that she could trust him with all that was within her and about her. And so she says, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says to her, you are right to say I don't have a husband. You've had five husbands and the man you are now with isn't your husband. You've spoken the truth. Sir, I can tell you're a prophet because you know me. You know that pace of pain. pain. And let's get this clear about this scripture. It doesn't say why she had five husbands. It doesn't explain that why. It doesn't explain it in a way that makes her seem like a broken person. Just says she has five husbands. So you know from that that there has been a lot of trauma. Maybe it's because she couldn't bear children and each of those husbands threw her aside. Maybe she was married very young to an old man and he died. And then they followed that Jewish tradition they talk about where she marries the next relative. But being as he was an elder, the next one also died. And being as they're all of that age, the next one died, and the next one died, and the next one died. Maybe she was cast aside for the new and better model that came along. We don't know the why. All we know is that she had five husbands, and now the one she is living with isn't her husband. And Jesus talks to her then. They talk about faith and belief and what's really important to know about God. What it is we should believe and feel. They get deep. He heard her pain. He went to her woundedness. I want to thank Nadia boltz Weber for that image of Jesus going to her wounded place and being with her in her woundedness. And because they went there to that woundedness, she was open to hear about God, the God that Jesus shares with people, the God that is the God of hope and love and grace and forgiveness and second chances and third chances and seven times 70 chances that God is sharing with her that her wounded place isn't her defining characteristic. Her wound isn't the end of the story. That God has a place for her. And so they talk about that God. They share about the God of love, the God of the living water, the God who speaks in the rain and the bird song, the God who can change the way you encounter the world. And maybe during this time, this time when we are asked to spend more time at home, for some of us that's more time alone or with our pets, 
without other family and friends. Maybe during this time when we are alone, we can work on our own wounded places. Those places that we don't like to talk about and don't share with others. Maybe we can deal with our wounds so that God can encounter us with that same living water, that same essence of forgiveness, that God can share with us the hope and promise of that living water that will quench our thirst, that will save our lives. Amen. God, meet us at the wells where we are lonely, where we are forgotten, where we are hurt by others, and give us to drink of the grace that brings life again. God, speak to us in the trysting places where the sinners gather, where the prejudices are made known, where our histories are broadcast, and give us to drink of the forgiveness that brings peace again. God, we ask that you would open our hearts to the needs of all those who thirst. Give us courage to work together, to stand alongside those who are thirsty, so that all people everywhere may live without want or fear and may discover your abundant life. And, oh God, we ask you to be with the world in pain right now. Be with those who are sick and those who are caring for the sick be with those who have lost their jobs be with those who are hungry we ask you to surround these people with your love may you share with them the abundant life that you have promised us as we pray together the prayer that you taught us our father who art in heaven Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We are called to live in hope and to share this hope with the world. Through our gifts, may all experience the hope to be found in our life-giving God. Let us pray. Living water, use us and our gifts that we may be water bearers to a world thirsty for love, for meaning, for justice, and for hope. Amen. And if nobody told you today that I love you, remember that God loves you and always will, that Jesus loves you and always will, that I love you and always will. 
and may you be filled with the living water and may you act on that love. Amen.